<laughs> it's Brian it's, Smith. It's, those were the Cheshire voice singers, some of the nicest people you'll ever meet in your life. And, and they have that nice little song that starts out our podcast. I love hearing it. It means it's time for episode 25. Episode 25 of this thing, the uh, Smith and Landry podcast, not a podcast. And our email address, lest you forgot. What you is like it? that I word, forgot. lest? Yeah, lest. It's fancy. Uh, ice cream soda CT at gmail.com. Oh, that's, that's right. Let me write that down. Ice cream what? Ice cream, Ice cream soda, soda CT, CT at gmail.com. Gmail.com. And if you want to listen to us and tell people where to listen to us, we're on YouTube. Simple as that. One click, you're there. YouTube, you search the name Ice Cream Soda CT, all one word up in the search box. Hit search. Mm, and you're listening to us. Simple as that. And make sure you subscribe. Yeah, that's a big thing for us, too. It's free. Yeah. And uh, it, it's just like listening to the radio, only it's on demand. Is that what they call it? I think so. On demand. That's what the kids say. That's, that's cool. It's streaming <laughs> on demand. And all you have to do is listen to it, and you're right. It's, it's just like we're there with you, only you don't have to shower before you talk to us. I demand to listen <laughs> to Brian and Pam. And how much does it cost? I would prefer if you did shower, though. <laughs> I, 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 you know, it's I free. Want to say anything. What? Free. F R E E. It's free? Nothing. Not a zilch. I got to pick up something I can drop. <laughs> Not me. What? <laughs> it's free. Listening to this is free and easy. It's easier than listening to that thing they call radio. Well, Brian, we find ourselves deep into December now. Here we are. Weather hasn't been that bad for the past couple of days. No, it looks like we might get some snow on Wednesday morning, then some sunshine Thursday, another warm-up toward the weekend, but it looks like it's going to be rainy, at least at this point. And uh, that's our weather now for our traffic. Yep, there's some there's some cars out there. So <laughs> everything you need in a radio broadcast in one simple Click of your mouse. Ninety one, ninety five. The Parkway. How All they look. looking good. They're looking great. They're they're paved, and there's trees on both sides, <laughs> and lots of cars. So it's the Smith and Landry podcast, not a podcast, and we'll be right back to tell you what's coming up in the show. It's a podcast, not a podcast. Okay, so here we are in the podcast, not a podcast, with Pam Landry, not Pam Landry. No, it's me. Oh, it is. Is it you, Brian Smith? Yeah, I'm Brian Smith, not Brian Smith. I thought maybe it was Santa Claus. <laughs> and uh, now we have some more stuff on the show, not a show. Episode 25, and we've got some special, special guests today, Brian Smith. Coming up, you know, we're wrapping up the uh, holiday party season in the Quinnipiac Chamber of Commerce. They're having their big holiday party this week. That's right, this Thursday. So Gary Carleglio, Director of Sales and Marketing for the Quinnipiac Chamber, will be here to talk about that. Whitney Players, they have a big show coming up in Hamden this week. Cindy Simmel DeVoe will be here to talk about that. Out in the Shoreline area, the Shoreline Chamber of Commerce has a great thing going on. It's a, it's an, what is it called? An elf house? A magical elf house. That's it. The magical, Very cool. <laughs> the magical elf house. Everybody needs one of those. Uh, so we have Sherry Cody, for, who is... So we have Sherry Cody, who is the president of the Shoreline Chamber, to talk about that. Sarah Bishop Delaventura out at Bishop's Orchards has a big bicycle program going on to get bikes to underprivileged kids. The Roots for Relief Bike Fundraiser. That culminates this weekend. We'll find out about that. And a good friend of ours, Tony Falcone, we've done a lot of work with over the years. He's an artist from the New Haven area. He's got a retrospective going on in New Haven. We'll hear from him. That and a lot more. We are your correspondents for everything that's going on in this area. How can there possibly be more? <laughs> well, if they paid us more. Oh. Yeah, we got to talk to the bosses about that. There's always more. You know, Pam, it's always something. <laughs> it's always something. But now let's go back to our music and entertainment roots, Pam Landry, and let's talk about what's going on in the entertainment world with birthdays. Yay! Celebrity birthdays. Celebrity birthdays. Is that, what? Is that a song? Celebrity birthdays, not birthdays, here on the podcast, not a podcast. And we start the list with Christina Aguilera, who is 39 this week. Jake Jellen, uh, Melon Kelly. Jake uh, Jellen Balls. Jellen Hall. Jake Jellen Hall is 39 years old. <laughs> 
Why doesn't he just change his name to something that's shorter and easier to spell? Jake G. You know? Do you, do you think do you think Spellcheck has a problem with his name? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> it's underlined red again. It's Jake Jellenhall for crying out loud. Oh. Mr. 24, Kiefer Sutherland, is 53. Brad Pitt turns 56 years old this week. Ray Romano is 62. Ray Liotta is 65. Billy Gibbons, ZZ Top, and one of the nicest guys I've ever had the pleasure of meeting in the music world. 70 this week. I thought he was older than that. His beard is. (laughs) He inherited his beard from his grandfather. Paul Rogers of Bad Company, he turns 70 this week. Samuel L. Jackson is 71. Did you say bleeping Samuel L. Jackson is 71? (laughs) On a bleeping plane. Alan Parsons from the Alan Parsons Project, he turns 71 as well. Steven Spielberg is 73. You get this. Keith Richards from the Rolling Stones, 76 years old this week. Keith! Only 76? Yeah, one of the Glitter Twins. He turned 76. However, his hangover is 95. (laughs) Journalist Leslie Stahl is 78. Actress Liv Allman turns 81 years old this week. Jane Fonda in the news getting um, arrested like every day lately. She's 82. Phil Donahue turns 84. This week's winner of Celebrity Birthdays. Coming in at 95 years old this week is Cicely Tyson. She is not. Cicely Tyson turns 95 this week? Amazing actress. That's, there's got to be something wrong there. <laughs> you sure it's not upside down? She's, she's not 65? She's Cicely Tyson turns 95, 95 this week? 95. That's incredible. Just like the highway. And speaking of 95, yes, there's still traffic out there, Pam Landry. Beep, beep. It's me, Brian Smith, with Pam Landry, your correspondence for what are we doing this time? We're doing This Week in Music History. Your correspondence in This Week in Music History. And now we start our This Week in Music History. But first, let me press the button for the song. There we go. This Week in Music History. We start with 1961. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) The Tokens started a three-week run at number one with... The lion sleeps tonight. A whim away, a whim away. In 1962, dee dee the tornadoes started a three-week... The tornadoes started their three-week sit at number one with the song Telstar. right there. Violating the rights copyright on our podcast, not a podcast. So beautiful, isn't it? It is. You know what? I really don't know this song that well. Moving on. That's Telstar, and uh, going all the way back to 1962 with that song, we'll be paying our $250 to BMI ASCAP. Uh, 1963 is next. Well, the story goes uh, that this week in 1963, Brian Smith, James Carroll at WWDC in Washington, D.C., became the first disc jockey to broadcast a Beatles record on American radio. Uh, this is the story has been disputed by some, but let's just say that, you know, this is this is this is how the story goes. He played I Want to Hold Your Hand, which he had gotten from his girlfriend who brought the single back from the U.K. I know there are other stories that have circulated about other DJs that were the first to broadcast a Beatles record on radio. Wasn't me, wasn't you. And did he have to pay money for their broadcast rights as well? He had it easier than we did back then. Yep. And James Carroll, I never heard this story before. Really? I'm learning a lot from today's (laughs) podcast. In 1964, the Supremes, this week in 1964, the Supremes scored their third number one single with Come See About Me. This week in 1969, Peter, Paul, and Mary went to number one with Leaving on a Jet Plane. John Denver wrote the song in 1966. The original title of it was Oh Babe, I Hate to Go. This week, back in 1972, Billy Paul started a three-week run at number one with Me and Mrs. Jones. Me and Mithith. Mithith. Jones. Mrs. Jones. Mithith Jones. We got a thang Thang going going on. on. Brian, this week in 1973, Elton John began two weeks at number one with the album Goodbye, Yellow Brick Road. 
Man, that album was loaded with hits. Mm-hmm. Do you remember that? Goodbye Yellow Brick Road? Double album. Cost a lot of money. Great album. Yeah. 1979. This week in 1979, Rupert Holmes started his two-week sit at number one with the song Escape the Pina Colada Song. And a fun fact, Brian, mm-hmm. I despise that song. <laughs> yeah. I always have. There's another fun fact. You're not the only one. <laughs> this week in 1982, Holland Oates started a four-week run at number one with um, one of my least favorite Holland Oates songs. This is a big dance hit, but it wasn't, Man a, Eater. it wasn't a typical Holland Oates song. No. It was this week in 1984, Madonna started a six-week sit at number one with the song Like a Virgin. That was her first number one song. 1986, the Bengals started four weeks at number one with Walk Like an Egyptian. It was this week, back in 1989, that Billy Joel put out his 11th studio release. It went to number one. That album was Stormfront from Billy Joel. And finally, Brian, 2012, seven years ago. That's nuts. Gangnam Style by South Korean musician Psy became the first YouTube video to reach a billion views. It was everywhere. That song was, was Everybody was, was singing it. it. Was Everybody was dancing. Everywhere. Seven years. Yep. And the only song that replaced that um, on the dance floors for weddings and dances was uh, Uptown Funk. Much better than Whoop Them Gangnam Style. <laughs> oh. You know what was the embarrassing thing? Was that thing where he rode the horse? Yes. The pantomime was horse. was doing that. And, and people would get drunk on the dance floors. Terrible. And they, they'd do a, you know, a, a display that was just bordering on pornographic. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now we go from this uh, music history stuff to actually this week in history. Let's find some of the interesting things. And let's go now to Pam and Brian. This week in history. Thank you, Pam. I'm Brian. Let's go find out what happened in uh, history. Let's take out the book and oh, look at this, Pam. Ready, set, go. Let's go back to this week in 1903, Pam Landry. And it was this week. That would be 1903. 1903, yes, the 03s. <laughs> and it was uh, this week that uh, in, in history, in 1903, that uh, brothers Orville and Wilbur Wright flew the first plane in uh, near Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. It was a uh, gasoline-powered, propeller-driven biplane, and it stayed in the air for 12 seconds, went 120 feet on its very first flight. And they Amazing. were- Amazing. Yes, they, they, they are credited with being the first people to fly a plane, but the people in Bridgeport, Connecticut, uh, and, and Mr. Whitehead's friends would have a complaint against that. Brian, this week in 1917, the NHL opened its first season. No kidding, 1917. Yeah, I've been wow. playing hockey ever since. Yep, that's a lot of teeth. Uh-oh. This week, back in 1957, while spending his Christmas holiday at Graceland, uh, that's in Tennessee, Elvis Presley got his first draft notice for the United States Army. And 10 years later, this week in 1967, the movie The Graduate opened up in New York City. It was this week back in 1969, late night TV, Tiny Tim and Miss Vicky were married on the Johnny Carson show. And that was something that had never happened before, like, a, you know, stars being married live on TV. That made a newspaper headlines like you wouldn't believe. Yeah. That's what our grandparents tell us. <laughs> Tiptoe through the tulips. Miss Vicky. Miss Vicky. So it was this week in 1977, a big movie opened in theaters, Saturday Night Fever. Speaking of movies, this week back in 1980, the movie 9 to 5 opened up in theaters across the country. And this week in 1984, on the New York City subway, Bernard Getz, who at the time was 45 years old, white guy, shot four young black men after they surrounded him and asked him for five bucks. That was a story that you saw everywhere. That never ended. No. That and the Son of Sam story back then took over New York for years. Yeah. This week, back in 1988, it was Pan Am Flight 103 from London to New York exploding in the air over Lockerbie, Scotland. Killed everybody on board and 11 people on the ground. This week in 1997, Titanic opened in theaters. That was 22 years ago that Titanic opened up. And it was it was one of those movies that was just, it was a blockbuster, and it was a life event. Have you seen Titanic yet? No. Then stop what you're doing. Brian. Yes. Are we, I've are never we, seen the entire movie. You've never seen, well. From it, start it, to finish. It, you know, it was, it was one of those movies where <laughs> they should have put an intermission in it because you 
You, you couldn't sit there for what was it seven hours long? I, I just I don't know, but I just <laughs> never. I, I've seen bits and pieces mm-hmm. of it, but never sat through the whole movie. I hear the the, the ship sinks. Oh, spoiler alert! No! It was this week back in 1998. President Clinton was impeached by the House. It's Brian and Pam. And now Brian Smith. Yes, Pam Landry. We turn our attention to local events. Local events. Local events. We know more about them than anybody. Well, almost anybody. Not the people putting them on, but we know a lot about a lot of stuff. Does that make us know-it-alls? No, it just makes us the purveyors of all things pertinent in the podcast, not a podcast. Well, this Thursday, Brian, the Quinnipiac Chamber of Commerce is having their holiday party. And this is one of those deals where if you have an office and you don't want to go through all the trouble of putting together a party, or you maybe you don't have enough people who can, who can justify having a big party, you buy tickets to a party. And go to it. And the Quinnipiac Chamber of Commerce has one of those parties. And to tell us a little bit more about it is Gary Carleglio, Director of Sales and Marketing for the Quinnipiac Chamber. Hi, Brian and Pam. This is Gary Carleglio with the Quinnipiac Chamber of Commerce. Just want to let everyone know that we have our holiday party coming up on Thursday, December 12th from 6 to 10 p.m. It's going to be at Zandry Stillwood Inn in Wallingford. $49 per person. Complete buffet. Open bar. Again, Zandri Stillwood in Quinnipiac Chamber of Commerce Holiday Party, Thursday, December 12th. See you then. Thank you. That's Gary Carleglio, the business executive from the Quinnipiac Chamber of Commerce. Now, for our friends in Wallingford, that's not the only thing that's going on. We have an event Saturday in Wallingford. That's right, Brian. Wallingford Library, Saturday morning, 1030 till 3 in the afternoon. There's a holiday market. Get all kinds of great local artisan pieces, including quilting and fabric art and woodwork and jewelry and photography and pottery and Lord knows what else. Wallingfordlibrary.org for info. That's great. And from Wallingford, Pam, I'm thinking uh, Hamden should be next. So let's go to Hamden and find out what's going on this weekend. Saturday, we've got an event at Best Video. Yeah, Saturday night, 7.30, 5 in the Chamber at Best Video on Whitney Avenue. And they are a Connecticut-based bluegrass band. And you can get more information, find out about tickets at bestvideo.com. And as we stay in Hamden, your Smith & Landry podcast, not a podcast, look at this coming Sunday. Why, yes, we do. The Whitney Players Theater Company presenting their Holiday Cabaret 11th Annual. It is a Sunday at the Knights of Columbus Lodge on Whitney Avenue in Hamden. Night starts out with dinner and a show to follow. And to tell us more, Cindy Sibel DeVoe with the Whitney Players. Thanks, Brian and Pam, and happy holidays. It's Cindy Simmel DeVoe with the Whitney Players, and it is that time of year for our holiday cabaret. It will be this Sunday, the 15th, at 3 in the afternoon over at Columbus Lodge on Whitney Avenue. It's a full-course dinner, plus entertainment by your favorite Whitney Players. It's a great holiday event. Tickets are $30. You get your meal, you get your entertainment. What more could you want for at the holiday season? Once again, we're the Whitney Players. We're Hamden's nonprofit theater company. We're educating young people and entertaining our community. Hope you can join us if you'd like tickets. Give us a call, 203-281-6007. Again, the event's on Sunday at 3, the Whitney Players Holiday Cabaret. Thanks again, Brian and Pam, and happy holidays from the Whitney Players. From Hamden, we go right up Route 10 and find out what's happening with our friends in Cheshire. Well, this Saturday, Brian. Where? At the Cheshire Community Pool. Cheshire. Cheshire Community Pool. Cheshire. It sounds fancy. It's Scuba Santa. Oh, no kidding. (laughs) I love this. I don't know about this. Tell me what? Yep. Between 2.30 and 3.30, Saturday afternoon at the Cheshire Community Pool, you can have your child's picture taken underwater with Santa. Isn't that dangerous? Scuba Santa, four bucks. How does that work? I don't know. I'm not asking questions. (laughs) However, if you're going... Please also consider bringing an unwrapped toy and or non-perishable food item to donate. Food and toy donations will benefit the Cheshire Food Pantry and Toys for Tots. Does it it have to be a waterproof toy, too? (laughs) Hey, Santa, catch! I don't know if I want to see Santa in scuba gear. Can I make a suggestion if our friends from Cheshire are listening? There has to be a baby shark do 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 with a Santa hat on someplace. Scuba Santa. Scuba Santa in Cheshire. More information? CheshireCT.org. And now from Cheshire this Cheshire. weekend. 
from uh, that's what I said. And now from Cheshire, Cheshire, we head up to uh, North Haven for another event this weekend. Two events, Brian. Halfway Home Rescue of North Haven with two pet adoption events this weekend. Saturday at Pet Smart in North Haven from 11 till 2. Sunday at Pet Co. in North Haven, 11 till 3. And also on Sunday, Pet Photos with Santa from 12 till 3 at Pet Co. Halfwayhomerescue.org for more info. Is is Santa good with pets? Or, or I should ask this question. Are pets good with Santa? Well, he has reindeer. Yeah, well, that's true, yes. But, you know, I don't think the reindeer are going to nip at him during a photograph. In the history of pets posing with Santa Claus, there has to be some stories where Santa Claus got bitten by the dog. Now, are these, let me ask you this, are these all animals or just dogs? Can you bring cats? Snakes and iguana, perhaps? Is this all animals or just doggies? I would assume that all leashed and well-behaved animals would be mm-hmm. acceptable. Okay, all right. That'll Trust be... me, no cats want to get their photos taken with Santa. <laughs> oh, I'd pay to see that, yeah. too. Yeah, no. And now let's get in our sleigh ride and take it from North Haven out to the shoreline and our friends out in Brantford in the Shoreline Chamber of Commerce. Brian, I love this. This sounds so cool. It's the Magical Elf House. That's what they call my place sometimes. <laughs> How could this not sound great? It's, it's two days. It's Saturday and Sunday from 9 till 3. Now, last year it was in Guilford, so it changes. It moves along the shoreline. This year in Brantford, it's set up in a seaside home in Brantford, but the location is not revealed until the day of the event. Kind of mysterious. And here to talk about it is Sherry Cody, the president of the Shoreline Chamber of Commerce. Hi, Brian. Hi, Pam. Thank you for inviting me to talk about the second annual Magical Elf House. This year, the Shoreline Elves have taken up residency in the Stony Creek area of Brantford. They will open their home for tours this Saturday and Sunday only. Our friends from Design House Interiors in North Haven, as Christmas fairies, have created whimsical, interactive tours of the house that children and adults will love. In the house, guests will see dancing sugar plum fairies, a singing princess, an elf dinner, and a visit by the Grinch. They will even see Santa's bedroom, but we can't wake him if he's sleeping. Guests will also be invited to decorate Christmas cookies with Mrs. Claus. We encourage everyone to come and meet our Christmas fairies and tour the magical elf house this weekend. But hurry, we only have a few tickets left. More information can be found on our website, shorelinechamberct.com, or by calling us at 203-488-5500. And Brian, proceeds from the Magical Elf House benefit the Shoreline Chamber of Commerce Scholarship Fund. That sounds like a great event. Yeah, it's very cute. Hey, fix the house up for Christmas. I wouldn't want to change it back. It's magical. Anyway, we go from the magical elf house in Brantford, thanks to our friends at the Shoreline Chamber of Commerce, to East Haven, Saturday. Big event going on there at the library. There is a Meet the Author event at the East Haven Library, Saturday afternoon from 2 to 4.30. John Palillo, who's originally from East Haven, he's a successful dancer, singer, actor, choreographer, and fitness professional in New York. He uh, will be selling and signing copies of his book, Another New York Moment. And the weekends during the holiday period, of course, don't mean just buying Christmas trees and getting sugar-filled treats. No, weekends in East Haven mean a trip to the Trolley Museum. Well, but you can enjoy a complimentary cookie and hot chocolate while you're doing that. That's great. They're complimentary, but are they free? What? You think the cookies go, ooh, you look very nice today, (laughs) Mr. Smith. (laughs) You look very nice in that. Please don't eat me. (laughs) Santa's Trolley at the Shoreline Museum, Saturday and Sunday in December through the 22nd from 11 till 5, 10 bucks per person. And uh, all kids also receive a small gift from Santa. ShorelineTrolley.org for info. From East Haven, let's stay on the shoreline. We'll go to Guilford. We're going to talk about about the big bicycle uh, fundraiser at Bishop's Orchards, and that will be part of the uh, Roots for Relief program. But let's go to Dudley Farm first and find out what's happening there on Saturday. The farms are busy. 
Uh, this Saturday from 9 till 2, Dudley Farm on Durham Road in Guilford. Step back in time in their 1845 farmhouse and museum. Two floors you can browse through the Munger Barn for unique and organic items, homegrown and handmade by more than 30 vendors, listening to performances by the Dudley Farm String Band. For more, <laughs> DudleyFarm.com. <laughs> See, all this stuff sounds great. Love it. Now, uh, while we're still in Guilford, let's go to Bishop's Orchards. Find out how to give bicycles to underprivileged kids. Well, they've been collecting donations for uh, several weeks, and Saturday is the culmination of their Roots for Relief benefit. Well, I'll let Sarah Bishop De La Ventura of Bishop's Orchards fill us in. The holiday season is upon us, and Roots for Relief, a nonprofit organization whose mission it is to empower children to make a difference in their own communities, has just kicked off our fundraising efforts for our third annual Wishing Wheels Bike Drive. The purpose is simple, to bring the joy of the holidays to as many underprivileged children as possible with the gift of a brand new bicycle and helmet. Many of us have memories of getting that one special present on Christmas morning. Please join us as we help create those lasting memories for those less fortunate by making a donation to the Wishing Wheels Holiday Bike Drive. With your help over the last two years, we have provided over 200 bicycles and helmets to underprivileged children in our community and throughout Connecticut. We want every child to experience the joy of getting a brand new bike. Please make a donation today. No amount is too small or large. For information on how to donate and our upcoming December 14th bike build and Christmas event, you can visit our Facebook page or rootsforrelief.com. That's roots, the number four, relief.com. Thank you, Sarah Bishop Della Ventura from Bishop's Orchards. And uh, we go from Guilford down to the town of Orange, where, Pam, I've got to say, I heard about the lighted tractor parade. Oh, how did that go? It was great. You know, it was postponed the first weekend, so they just had it this past weekend. Were you there? Uh, I didn't get a chance to go, but I saw pictures and I talked to some of the organizers, and it was great. They had about 30 tractors that showed up with, nice. with, with Christmas lights and holiday decorations. It was terrific. That's a great idea. The Orange Lighted Tractor Parade. I'll be there next year. So, speaking of Orange, they're having a special service on Sunday. This is really a nice idea, Brian. It's Sunday at 7 o'clock at the Church of the Good Shepherd on Racebrook Road in Orange. You know, the holidays, lots of joy and parties and celebrating and festive stuff going on. It's not always a happy time for a lot of people. So, the uh, Church of the Good Shepherd on Bracebrook Road has their Blue Christmas Service Sunday at 7 o'clock. I have not heard about this. This sounds interesting. What, what The Blue Christmas it's for people who um, are feeling loss and pain and sadness, which comes with the holidays sometimes. And this is a peaceful, contemplative service, creating a space for memories that may seem out of place this season, and all are welcome. So if you're feeling a little down, you can go to the Blue Christmas Service. It's very tough for people who are feeling sadness during the holidays to sit there and hear everybody whooping it up and feel out of place. I'd never heard of this. It's a great idea. It is a great idea, and there are a lot of people that, you know, the holidays are a tough time. Well, if you're around the city of New Haven this weekend, there's plenty of stuff to do for the holidays. There is always plenty of stuff to do in New Haven. And this weekend on Saturday, Common Ground High School's Winter Festival is happening from 10 until 2. There'll be a local craft fair, kids' activities, a bake sale, food, and a raffle, and that is free to attend. Also this Saturday, Westville, a lovely section of New Haven, is having their tree lighting at 5.30 at Blake and Whaley. There's a lot there. They're having their uh, tree lighting, and a whole bunch of holiday shopping is going on. They have something called the Anti-Mall Shop Small Market. <laughs> oh, no kidding. That's a great idea. At Lotta Studio on Whaley Avenue. They have open studios at West River Arts. They have launch of the Unframed Art Sale at Keller Liddell Gallery on Whaley Avenue. A whole lot going on, including a free concert at uh, 7 o'clock o'clock that night at the Keller Liddell Gallery by the local South African soul star Thabisa. Well, there's still an event going on at the Maritime Center in New Haven as well. It's the Trees of Hope. And that uh, ends this Sunday, 30th anniversary Trees of Hope at the Maritime Center on Long Wharf Drive from 10 till 5 on Sunday, open to the public. You can buy raffle tickets, and there's a display of over 140 decorated trees and wreaths and holiday baskets, and those displays will be raffled off to benefit the Ronald McDonald House of Connecticut. Well, that's good. They raffle them off. Yeah. They don't just throw them in Long Island Sound. No. No, no, no. Those are valuable trees. 
raffle them off. Don't throw them in the water. And also, there's something going on through the end of the year. It's uh, it's our one of our favorite displays out at Lighthouse Point Park. Presented by Goodwill of Southern New England, it's the 25th Annual Fantasy of Lights. Now through December 31st at Lighthouse Point Park. You can find out more at goodwillsne.org. Tony Falcone is an artist who has done a lot of work around New Haven. Uh, speaking of the Maritime Center, he's responsible for the, the, the mural on the side of Sports Haven. Yeah. He was also the artist who painted the sides of the old movie theater in Hamden on Dixwell Avenue. Well, now Tony Falcone has a retrospective of his work going on at Gateway Community College on Church Street. It's through February 14th, and here is Tony to tell us more. Hi, this is Tony Falcone. I'm having a show that is at the New Alliance Foundation Gallery at Gateway Community College in New Haven on the corner of Church and George Street. It is running now through February 14th, 2020. I've been an artist for 45 years and thought it was a good time to have an exhibit which features what I've been up to since 1974. It's fun. There's like murals, there's portraits, there's fantasy paintings, there's environmental pieces, cityscapes, there's a display depicting work I've done for the United States Coast Guard for 15 years doing a project called the Historical Murals Project. There's wonderful things there that you can really relate to that I feel are important, uh, especially involving the environment. Please let me know what you think and check out my website at www.falconeartstudio.com. And I hope to talk to you soon. Thank you. That is artist Tony Falcone. Done a lot of work in our area for years. Pam, I'm serious when I say this. He's a New Haven treasure. He is. And one of the nicest guys, too. So go check out Tony Falcone's retrospective at Gateway Community College. Well, Pam Landry, yes. are we done? No. No, why? No, I have some something very interesting to share with you, Brian. Oh, I want to hear something interesting. Okay, um, so the next full moon, it's this week. It is Thursday. This Thursday? Yes. That would be December 12th. That's correct. It is Thursday, December 12th, and it happens at 12, 12 a.m. Get out. Do you know what that means? Yes, I'm starting to to see this now. That means... It happens on Thursday. That means December's full moon, called the cold moon, gee, I wonder why, will peak on 12, 12 at 12, 12. Get out. (laughs) Where's my talisman? Where's my onion necklace? That's pretty cool. That is wild. That's that's wild stuff. Twelve twelve at twelve twelve. Right. That's this Thursday. So the number twelve mm-hmm. has significance when it comes to our relative understanding of space and time. You bet it does. Like what? According to Wikipedia, which is, you know, the authority on everything, the number twelve carries religious, mythological, and magical symbolism, generally representing perfection, entirety, or cosmic order in traditions since antiquity. This is making me feel really good all of a sudden. <laughs> like secure. So a couple things. There are twelve months in a year. Yeah, I've got one. Our days are split in two groups of twelve hours. Oh, that's good, but no, I've got one. In Chinese numerology, 12 represents the harmony of the yin and yang. Uh, what, what? Really? Yeah. A couple other things. References to 12, Brian. Uh-huh. The 12 days of Christmas. Okay, I've heard that song. 12 <laughs> is associated with the heavens, 12 months, and 12 zodiac signs. Uh-huh. The number is widely used in the Bible. Number of apostles, the tribes of Israel, in the book of Revelation, there are 12 gates and 12 angels. Mm-hmm. The number of hours on a clock face, 12. I've noticed that. Most clocks have 12 numbers. Brian, what's the number of members on a jury? Uh, 12 angry men. Sometimes women. And women. How many stages of life are there in Buddhism? Oh, let me think. Let me go back to my old Buddhism class. Let me give you a hint. 12. (laughs) 12. I was just going to say that. The ancient Greeks worshipped how many major gods of Olympus? Can I I guess? Sure. 12? Yep. (laughs) Oh, son of a gun. Eggs come in packs of... Well, 12. Oh, that's correct. Laid by 12 angry chickens. <laughs> the average human has how many ribs, Brian? How many ribs? Ribs. Well, I, I, it depends on if it's an all-you-can-eat buffet. or No, if... no. The average human yeah. has how many ribs? I'm not talking about eating. <laughs> In your body. Uh, let me guess. 
12. Good. How many inches at a foot? Oh, I know this one. Uh, Is this metric or English system? 12. How many nights of King Arthur's Round Table? Uh, I think, you know what, Pam Landry? Um, I don't want to show off, but I know this one. It's 12. Very good. And we go through how many grades in school? Uh, <laughs> Most of us. Does this count all, all, in, <laughs> all in one try? Uh, 12. And then there's an expensive thing, college. Yeah. So 12, 12. Is, is a very significant number. Yes, but we didn't hit the one I was thinking of first. What's the one you were... Th- I'll tell you what mine is if you tell me what yours is. Okay, you first. Brian? Yeah. Beer comes in 12 packs. Beer comes in 12 packs. Well, what else comes in 12? The very first thing I thought of when you said that was a dozen donuts. Mm Mm-hmm. 12 is a dozen. The standard by which all pastries are measured. (laughs) (laughs) The dozen donuts. Sure, you can say, yeah, well, there's 12 stamps in a dozen, right? (laughs) What? 12 stamps in a dozen? There's 12 stamps in a dozen. You can say there's 12 pencils in a box of... 12 pencils. Or you can say there's 12 pencils in a box of a dozen pencils. Right. But, Pam, the standard to which all things are measured is a dozen donuts. donuts. And then there's the baker's dozen. Well, that throws the whole universe off. (laughs) Yes. That's not fair. Well, that would be 13, correct? And what's Friday this week? Oh, Friday the 13th. 13th. Oh, that's, that's not good. Right. That's Friday is the baker's dozen. <laughs> that's the baker's dozen. Bad luck day. So, Brian, have an extra donut. I will. Um, speaking of donuts, are we done? We, are, is this uh, anything else to talk about today? I think we're done. Are we finished? I think so. Goodbye!